Python on hardware time. Okay. All right. Um, the big and only news we're going to talk about this week is CircuitPython 8 Beta 1 and all of the Pico W stuff that's going on. Yes. So what, what can people do? They can watch the show and tell and see what Jeffler showed off, but what, what it, why is this such a big deal? What can they do soon? Okay. So uh, CircuitPython 8 has been Espressif and Wi-Fi based, so a lot of it is about Wi-Fi workflow, adding more Wi-Fi chip support. Um, and so um, we did 800 Beta 1. We've been doing a lot of bug squishing. Dan Halbert has just been like crushing the bugs. Um, and Jepler's helping out as well. Uh, good work on them. And then thank you everybody for submitting bug reports. Um, we might also update to Espressive 5X. They did a new IDF release. Um, we're still chatting about it because we only want to do that if it helps squish some more bugs. We're, we, we have, I think, a bug list of about 30 um, to get through before uh, we feel like 8 is in a really stable spot. So that's on the Espressive side. So Dan Halbert's been working on that, fixing a lot of stuff. We fixed a lot of low power stuff. I was a little bit adamant of like, no, we can get 70 microamps. Like, figure out why, Dan. And he actually like went out and like spent a week on it and figured it out um, and, and got that fixed. So low power for Espressive is also um, working. And I think he's working at some pin alarm stuff. And on the Pico W side, the Pico W has been out for a couple months and people were like, where's CircuitPython? And we're like, we just got this board the same time you did. Um, but one of the things we wanted to do is once we had, you know, Wi-Fi workflow and a couple other things going, we wanted to go back and um, make sure that the Pico W had Wi-Fi support in CircuitPython because our, our Wi-Fi stack in CircuitPython is really good. Like we have a lot of helper libraries and like uh, example codes for like tokens and authentications and, and our request library is really nice and handles all sorts of exceptions. And people have been able to like download and like stream MP3s and stuff. Like it was a very good. We have a really good job of um, lots of IoT projects. Um, Adafruit IO support. We've had the um, Azure demos lately, which I want to redo with the Pico W. Anyways, so the good news is that Jepler has been um, spending a lot of time working on the Wi-Fi stack. So for this Broadcom chip, you know, we had to use this firmware and we have to communicate with it over SPI. Um, last week we had HTTP working, so you could open up TCP uh, and I think also UDP uh, sockets with um, unsecured connections, and that was a really good start. We always love to start with that. But of course, it's important for TLS 1.2 support everywhere that we also support that as well. So as of today, um, Jepler, if you should watch the show and tell, did a demo where you can securely connect to an HTTPS site. Uh, with SSL and it checks the certificate authentication. So it will let you know, you, we actually have a certificate bundle that we've used with um, Espressive chips and the Nina firmware and we, we, we copied that into um, the CircuitPython firmware. So it'll also not just connect securely, but it will verify that the um, certificate you got is signed by a root certificate that is stored within um, the firmware itself. So first off, we can update the bundle very easily. Um, but also, you, it's it's like really trustworthy uh, security, so people can't man in the middle of it um, or woman in the middle of it. And then um, we're going to be working next on um, adding self-signed certificate support for people who do want. You know, you'll you'll be able to say in a self-signed certificate, check this fingerprint or check uh, this uh, certificate public key, and also client-side authentication. And uh, you know, it's important for us to have a you know good security for IoT. We really we, you know, chips are good enough these days to do SSL. Um, the pull request is still making its way through CI, but uh, I think on Monday people ch can check out the CircuitPython meeting or look at the pull request in CircuitPython. You can see a draft PR, subscribe to it, and when it's ready for people to check out, I think especially with SSL, that opens up the, basically the entire internet. We would love to know if it doesn't work on a site. Uh, we'll add the root certificate. Okay. Okay. And that's this week's Python on Hardware. I mean, of course, um, do check out the entire newsletter, um, but I did want to... Great projects in this newsletter, by the way. ...mention that specifically. Yeah, the it projects goes are on epic. and on and on and on. And one of the neat things is, especially with the Pico W, which has been pretty available and low cost, you'll be able to do kind of more of these advanced IoT projects that, um, you know, before you needed a heftier device or something, that maybe you had a screen or you know something that was designed just for that, but now you can do all these projects. They're kind of cool. 
Super cool. All right, we deliver that to your inbox every single week. Uh, go to adafruitdaily.com, completely separate site. Sign up for it. There's other newsletters that we do there too. No ads, no spam. Don't harvest the email addresses. Don't let anyone know about them. Um, the only way we do this is if, uh, or why we do this, because folks like it. So uh, we're trying to get to like 10,000 subscribers. So uh, we're getting close. So please sign up. That's our like metric. Maybe we'll do a little project with a Pico W that says how many subscribers we have. I we can Something. do that very soon. All right, and uh, and all this stuff is open source. 